Hey everyone, Nick here. Um, I haven't created a YouTube video in a while, so let's get started here. I'm gonna try to help people more this year. And this video, I'm gonna talk about five tips to learn Flutter like a pro. Um, take that word as you as as you will, right? Pro. Um, but if I was uh, starting over myself again, learning Flutter, um, I I would want to probably take this advice for myself because I would have saved myself a lot of time. So the 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 problem a lot of people have, and what I'm the, this advice is targeted for is people who spend months and months and months, and they are stuck in kind of like learning the same stuff. They don't know what their learning path should be. Um, they're stuck in a tutorial hell. They can't, still can't build a basic app or apply for a job or a freelancing position. So um, I think it's a matter of getting your learning path down and learning, like understanding what the best things to learn are, um, trying to understand what to avoid learning and build things like learn how to build first um, rather than getting too obsessed with learning every little feature under the sun with Flutter. So before we start, um, if you don't know me already, my name's Nick. Um, I have a, this YouTube channel where I, I help people learn Flutter and just give my advice. Um, I've been coding for 20 years. 10 years of that has been um, in mobile development. I've worked with Fortune 500 companies and startups um, building mobile apps. And um, I you know, have been teaching Flutter for about four years now. So. These are just my, my personal pieces of advice. You don't have to, you can disagree with them, um, that's fine, but um, this is just my advice and what I've seen in both very large teams and very small teams. So tip number one, um, learning um, a, it, as a new Flutter developer is, is a multiplayer game, right? It's not single player. Um, it's, you're gonna learn the best when you connect with people. And software engineers, yes, they're mostly uh, kind of introverted, um, you know, a number of software engineers are, and you probably will say to yourself like, okay, I can just read online documentation and courses, and um, I don't really have to talk to anyone, but I disagree. Uh, I think the best thing you can do right now as a Flutter developer, um, just getting started, is uh, one of two things, right? Or or just two things, basically. One, um, go to flutter.dev slash community and check out all the different ways you can connect with other Flutter developers. Second thing is whatever what you're working on, even if it's a crummy bit of code that you don't, you know, you find embarrassing, um, create a new GitHub repository that's public and just put the code there so that if you want to share with other people, you want to get help, you can point them to your repository and don't email people with your code. Don't send screenshots to um, to people with your code, and be ready to share that code and um, get opinions of of your code. So what I like to do is um, join some different Slack channels, Discord servers. Um, if you need some extra advice, you can email me. Um, uh, I have my email in the show notes here. Um, and you can ask people on Stack Overflow, which is great. But get used to um, um, asking questions and connecting with the community. So tip number two, um, stop learning what state management is uh, when you're just, just getting started out learning Flutter, right? So this is part of my advice in the beginning about learning what to avoid learning um, to save your time and what to kind of you know, double down on, right? So um, there's there's uh, lots of different opinions of what state management is, and I posted a great link by uh, Matt Carroll, um, who also has a, a Flutter channel who explains the different um, kind of interpretations of state management. Um, my whole point is um, state management um, packages, third-party packages, are often taught in courses and people talk about them on social media. And you start to kind of, as a newcomer to Flutter, you feel like, oh, well, what's the best one for, for me, right? Um, just ignore that for now, right? L learn how to build a very, very, very simple app first and then get to this whole state management stuff, right? There are certain topics in Flutter that you're just going to not need anytime soon if you just want to um, be basic, fundamentally competent as a, as a, as a, a new Flutter in, uh, engineer. So in a minute, I'm going to go into what you should learn instead of that. But my, my whole point is um, you can you can have like Flutter offers state management out of the box, right? There's something called inherited widget and there's ways to pass data to and from screens and and that's all well and good. But most likely when you're just starting out learning Flutter, you're not going to need to pass state across a widget tree. Your, your app is going to be very, very, very simple. So what do you learn instead of state management when you're just, just getting started out? So my advice is learn how to build 
uh, the the most typical stereotypical app in the mobile space there is, which is a list view of stuff that you can tap on one of those items and it it transitions to a detail screen that shows some simple UI showing the detail of something, right? You don't need a state management pa package for that. But I'll bet you that a lot of newcomers to Flutter have been learning for months and they still can't implement that. Now, I've been a hiring manager um, for more than five years now, and I have experience uh, fielding candidate resumes, code submissions. And when in the past I've interviewed uh, people applying for a job, it's if they're a freelancer or a full-time engineer, that is a very typical question I'm going to give them, which is, can you build a, a screen that shows a list of stuff with some dummy data? Can you tap on an item and show a detail screen? Now, for more senior candidates out there, there it's going to get much more complex than that. But focus on doing that. And the widgets you can learn to start off with Flutter um, is um, scaffold, uh, list view, uh, column, and just basic layout, uh, text, uh, button, and handling tap events. And that's a great set of skills to just get started. So tip number three, um, finding the best Flutter architecture or best of anything is something that will just waste your time. In engineering, there is no such thing as the best of anything. There are great products, great technologies out there. There are not so great technologies out there, but there are always trade-offs in programming. There is no best of anything, right? There are, um, you know, it all depends on the budgets, the team size, the expertise of a team. Um, and the, the use cases, the, the, the requirements of the application, et cetera. So there are many different types of uh, Flutter architecture patterns out there or in general programming patterns um, for mobile development. And trying to learn what the best is will waste your time because if I were to bet money on it, if you're actually serious about applying for a real Flutter position somewhere, most likely there's going to be there are going to be people that are going to say, look, we already take this approach. We don't want to use your architecture pattern. Right. Um, or this project might be too simple and you're, it's just going to be overkill and, and waste your time. So don't get too obsessed with that. Learn how to focus on the basics of software engineering and um, you can soak up different practices as you go and then choose the one that's right for you. Number four, um, if you're a newcomer to modable development, um, focus on the skills and widgets you need versus uh, ones that people tell you, you you think they think you need, right? So you can binge watch on YouTube all you want or take as many courses as you want. And all of those courses or mini courses or whatever, they're obligated to teach you a very comprehensive list of skills because um, they're just trying to cover all the bases. But most likely you're not going to need those skills. Um, I won't go into what those skills may be because it's very uh, contextual and based on um, everyone's uh, requirements. But what I think you should, might want to consider learning is the absolute basics. And that's what I went over previously. Can you write a very basic app, no matter what it does, and can you show people that and put it in a portfolio somewhere? Um, focus on that first before learning how to build extremely, extremely complex user interface um, and or, or learning some, some very exotic uh, feature of Flutter that um, you may never use, right? If it's fun to you and you find it interesting, great, go ahead and do that. But um, honestly, if you want to get a job or a freelancing gig or whatever, um, just focus on the boring basics first. I don't think it's boring because I like to teach Flutter and I like very simple apps, but uh, just focus on practical skills first and what you can uh, show off in your portfolio. Five, the last tip, this is the big one because I have a lot of follow-up content and thoughts on this, and it's going to probably spur a lot of conversations. So uh, here I go, right? Um, Flutter is not the only skill you will learn if you want a career in mobile development. There's a lot that goes into writing mobile apps, and Flutter, Flutter's role is to draw and render things on a, on a user interface, on a screen somewhere, um, and, that, and it, it supports cross-platform rendering of that, so Android, iOS, Windows, Linux, uh, web, whatever, right? If you want to stay focused only on user interface development, that's amazing. That's fine. You can do that. You can just focus only on the fact that you are a Flutter engineer and you just do UI development. That's totally fine. But 
let's just give you, let me give you an example. If you um, want to build an amazing app idea and you want to do it yourself or with another person, you're going to have to learn other skills such as marketing, branding, making an amazing app icon, writing awesome copy, taking awesome screenshots, learning how to do customer support, um, managing app updates and, um, and bugs and all that stuff like that. So there's a lot of non-technical work that goes into Flutter development, especially if you're a small team member. If you're part of a larger team or a small startup, you're going to have to think, learn about other things that are outside Flutter development. Um, can you set up push notifications, right? Um, and are they effective? Can you report um, logs that are, if, if your app crashes or just uh, error logs to a remote service, can you integrate that? That's not related to Flutter per se. Um, can you offer the same functionality to a web app, um, but also your Flutter app, right? Um, so that's starting to get into the realm of full stack mobile development. If you have any advice questions, just feel free to email me. I'll try to kind of answer everyone that emails me. It's just nick at fluttercrashcourse.com. And you can also reach out on my Discord server. Uh, and I'll put that link below. And um, if you're interested in learning Flutter, I create videos. And I also have a website, fluttercrashcourse.com. So thanks for watching. And uh, check out some of these other videos if you want to um, just learn the basics getting started with Flutter. And I'll see you soon.